forgotten about the AIDS epidemic that was on our minds on a daily basis just 10 years ago? Uh, we have some here to talk about that. Dr. Perry Halkidis is here to help us understand these issues today. Perry is a clinical professor at NYU with HIV and AIDS research. Please welcome Perry to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, you're the co-director of a thing called CHEST, C-H-E-S-T. -E what is CHEST? CHEST stands for the Center for H HIV Educational Studies and Training. Mm -hmm. What we do at CHEST is try to understand from a psychological perspective why people take risks, what they think about HIV, how they live with HIV, how they live with their medications, trying to understand quality of life issues and prevention issues for, for all people. So what are you saying? Why are people taking more risks? I mean, what is this risk Absolutely. taking about? I mean, it, I, so it's up. It's definitely up. You know, there were reports that came out of San Francisco last year, a, a report that's going to be released uh, this week, I think, from Seattle that indicates HIV ra rates are on the rise. I'm sure the same thing is going to follow in New York City, and the same kind of report is going to follow. So we see serial conversion rates definitely going up. You know, at a point where we had numbers stable during the beginning of the 90s, all of a sudden, the late 90s, that all changes. What is it about? Why? Uh, it's a really complicated think? question, but there's a lot, I think there's one main thing. And I think the, it's what, what was touched upon before is the issue of complacency sort of um, in the United States. People think that the epidemic's over. You know, you have medications, you take some pills and you're fine. So as a result of that, there's this optimism that develops. That optimism lets people take greater risks. So if I become HIV positive, I'll take meds, it'll be fine. There's no problem with that. That's the basic problem. I mean, being HIV positive uh, goes hand in hand with having a certain amount of stigma. People in the United States uh, view this disease as a bad thing. So if you are, you know, uh, an HIV positive person, in some ways you're a leper and you are, you're sort of pushed aside. Now you think there's a misconception about how you can get the, the virus. Yeah. What is that misconception? I think? think that the educational uh, system uh, in, the, in the last 10 years sort of fell apart. And I think that in schools and in the media, you know, 10 years ago, every day you turn on the news and there'd be a story on HIV. Do you see it now? No. I don't see those news stories at all. Well, 10 years ago, there would have been a, a story over the fight or whether kids could even go to school with That's this. right. That's right. But I it mean, got so much media attention as a result of that, and it kept it really in the forefront of people's minds. People were aware on a constant basis. People were much more educated as a result of that. I, I think that, uh, to, for me, it sort of starts in like around 1995, 1996, when the new medications come out. All of a sudden, you know, the New York Times front cover story, you know, AIDS deaths down. Years after that, we're seeing the repercussions. So do you think the fear of AIDS was like kind of eradicated in a way? I think it was. Because it be, used to be a big, you guys remember, I mean, AIDS was really something to be yeah. afraid of. Right. Do you think that that's kind of smoothed out a little bit with just showing the, the more positive sides of it or people who uh, were just living pretty decent, healthy lives? Right, absolutely. Considerably, you know, with think, it? Yeah, I do. I think you're, I think that's exactly what happened. I think it's a combination of things. You don't cover the realities, you know, on the news. You have the pharmaceutical companies who put out ads where people are like climbing mountains you know, because they're on HIV medications. Well, you know, the constant diarrhea, the fat deposits, the headaches, you know, the rashes, the hair loss. Where's that in those advertisements? Mm. You know, the pharmaceutical companies. Mm. You know, I mean, I agree the pharmaceutical companies have done a decent job. They've developed medications on a very fast period of time. But the reality is, this is the biggest experiment going on in the world. Mm -hmm. We don't know how long these medications are going to work. For some people, they work a day, two days, a week, a month. For some people, they work for like several years. You know, so the, the jury's still out on that. Wow. It's almost like the civil rights era. You know, how you see a lot of, and I don't mean to compare it like that, but how you saw a lot of, you know, black people being active at that point, and now it's like, whatever, we forgot what our, you know, we forgot our history in a way. We forgot, we, we, we don't vote sometimes, right. kind of but we back, could. Yeah. You know, when we, these people fought for the right That's to right. vote. So when it was like at its height, when everyone was just finding out about it, it was right in the front of our minds. But now that's getting replaced by a bunch of, okay, the fight is over. And it's not over. Right. I think that that's something that really has to be remembered. We got to take a break, but 